With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I'm back. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. It is my show. Thank you to Alan Victor Cam for filling in while I was gone. I got a great vacation in Hilton Head. But my gosh, I can tell I I, I love my job because I was dying to get back by the microphone. It always happens. I go on vacation and something happens like, I got to be behind the microphone and I can't be. Uh, But uh, that's all right because there's a whole lot to talk about. Uh, A lot of it from last week bleeding into this week. It's amazing how the stories don't change. Uh, Before I get there, though, I got to say, first of all, uh, the phone number is 877-973-7425. You can always go to EWErickson.com. You can find the live stream there, the 24-7 stream, the podcast, all of that. Uh, you can also get my sub stack on uh, the show briefing. But I, I feel like we've we've crossed the Rubicon to a degree. So while I was in Hilton Head, I literally could not go anywhere where I was not recognized uh, either by voice or appearance, uh, which, which is – usually it's voice. I went into one restaurant. And uh, somebody works at the car dealership where I buy my cars, heard my voice uh, and came out to speak. Very nice guy from Jim Ellis uh, here in Atlanta. And uh, But it, it, everywhere I went, what was remarkable, though, and this is why I say across the Rubicon, probably half the people don't actually listen to the show. The people I encountered in Hilton Head, uh, about half the people I encountered don't actually listen on the radio. Uh, they're all streamers and podcasts. They they listen. They found me on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere, and they listen. Uh, there was one couple from Pennsylvania that I met who listened, uh, who found me on Facebook. There was a guy from New York City, probably the only conservative in New York who I met who was in Hilton Head, and then several people from South Florida, uh, one guy from Washington State as well. They were all in Hilton Head for various things. The guy from Washington State was there for a family wedding. And all of them listened to the. I was absolutely flabbergasted. Uh, part of me was like, "All right, now I got to find somewhere else to go on vacation." There are too many people here to recognize me, but I love Hilton. They were all very, very, very nice. Uh, really, really super people. Uh, and uh, hi to all of you. I assume you're all listening. Uh, I, I cannot believe though, so many of the people who I encountered are listeners, but they're listeners to digital. Uh, not listeners to like standard radio. Um, it just it, it's growing across the board. To have somebody in Washington State in Hilton Head recognize me uh, at a dive bar where I was shooting pool with my son. Uh, yeah, I took my my thirteen year old wanted to play pool badly. There's a dive bar called Callahan's in Hilton. I've been going there since I was in college, and it was actually really cool to go in there with my son. Uh, he had water, I had a beer, and we we played pool all afternoon. It was it was a lot of fun. Didn't get on the golf course. There were so many people. There were no tea times. We did go to this place called uh, Chronic Golf. It's a big golf simulator. They got seven, eight rooms, and and you could hit on the big screen. I'm so terrible. I've got my golf lesson scheduled, though. We're going to make this happen. I'm going to get good. Now, we got to get to the news. I was dying to be here last week because this story hit at the end of last week on how badly Joe Biden has screwed this up. Uh, but you should know, though, there's a big story today. And I got to I got to read you the beginning of the story from Jonathan Lemire at Politico. President Biden and his aides have grown increasingly frustrated by their inability to turn the tide against a cascade of challenges threatening to overwhelm the administration, soaring global inflation, rising fuel prices, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a Supreme Court poised to take away constitutional right a potentially resurgent pandemic, a Congress to deadlock to tackle sweeping gun safety legislation, even amid an onslaught of mass shootings in crisis after crisis. The White House has found itself either limited or helpless in its efforts to combat the forces pummeling them. Morale inside 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is plummeting. 
amid growing fears that the parallels to Jimmy Carter, another first-term Democrat plagued by soaring prices and a foreign policy morass, will stick. Now, I got to stop here because Politico is increasingly uh, a mouthpiece for the Democratic Party. I mean, I, I just I don't think you can argue the point. If you read Politico playbook on a daily basis, it is now hyper, hyper partisan in its angling. Uh, and this guy, Jonathan Lemire, had been a host uh, on MSNBC. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, his leanings. He worked at uh, the New York Daily News, also a left-leaning publication. Uh, and and you, you could just kind of get a sense from Politico increasingly that Politico leans left editorially. It's been bought by this German group now. It tends to be free market but lean left. And so I got I to gotta refocus on the second paragraph of the piece. Soaring global inflation, rising fuel prices, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a Supreme Court poised to take away a constitutional right, a potentially resurgent pandemic, a Congress too deadlocked to tackle sweeping gun safety legislation, even amid an onslaught of mass shootings. See how they phrase those issues. As if Biden didn't cause a bunch of these problems. Fuel prices. Notice global inflation, the American inflation actually exceeds global inflation. So, yeah, the, the whole globe is experiencing inflation, but we are experiencing higher inflation than the rest of the world. Why is that? So now we, we, we go down here to this. The plan is to put Biden on the road to highlight progress being made, even incrementally. In meeting the series of tests with visits this week to California, a progressive state where his popularity is above water, where he will preside over a summit of Western Hemisphere allies, Mexico has announced its bailing, as well as New Mexico, another progressive state, to push for his climate agenda. The administration will also set aside its reluctance to work with a pariah nation with hopes to spur oil production. And it plans to sharpen its attacks on Republicans, aim to paint the GOP as out of touch with mainstream America on issues like gun safety and abortion, all while hoping the upcoming January 6th congressional hearings will further color the party as too extreme and too dangerous to return to power. But first, aides need to quell the finger pointing that's been erupting internally and the increasing concern about staff shakeups, according to five White House officials and Democrats close to the administration not authorized to talk publicly about internal conversations. They also increasingly are trying to soothe the greatest source of West Wing frustration coming from behind the resolute desk. The president has expressed exasperation that his poll numbers have sunk below those of Donald Trump. <laughs> Oh, my, that's what he's mad about. That's what he's mad about. Biden routinely refers to President Trump in private as the worst president in history and an existential threat to the nation's democracy. <laughs> After publication, White House spokesperson Andrew Bates said this depiction of the White House is simply devoid from reality. No, it's not. Oh, my gosh. That's why he's buttered. He's un more unpopular than Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. This is where we are, America. The president only wants to engage with you because you hate him more than you hate Trump. But let's, let's, let's go back here. Let's go back. He's going to go to California to preside over some of the Western Hemisphere allies. And then he wants to push for his climate agenda. He wants to, to work with pariah nations to produce more oil. And he wants to go after the GOP for being out of touch on gun safety and abortion and focus on January 6th. This is why you suck, Mr. President. This is why the American people hate you. Nobody wants your climate agenda. 
They want more. They want more American domestic energy production. They don't want you to enrich Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and Iran. They want you to enrich Americans at home with energy production, and you can't do it because of your stupid climate agenda. I mean, this is why this administration is in the problem it's in, frankly. Because they're so dogmatically convinced that we have to have this climate change agenda. They are unwilling and unable to make a necessary pivot to American energy independence. They are unable to proceed with a rational plan without blaming Republicans. I mean, listen to Pete Boot Edge Edge. Well, look, the president's made clear that inflation is his top economic priority, and he's laid out a very clear strategy for doing that. I'm sure additional ideas will be welcomed, uh, especially when they're ideas that come in good faith. Uh, okay, I, I got to stop. I got to stop here. Do you know what the president's plan is? This is the other thing I wanted to talk about last week when I was on vacation. The president's plan literally is allow the Federal Reserve the space it needs to tackle inflation and lower prices for American families. That's their plan. It's like the internet meme of of let the Fed have their space. Number two is blank. Number three is cash in. I mean, this this is the level of sophistication of the White House inflation plan. It, it's it's a nothing burger. But right now, the president has a, a very clear plan. Now, unfortunately, from the other side of the aisle, what we're seeing is not very much by way of concrete ideas, right? Uh, we've heard uh, something from Senator Rick Scott about raising taxes on uh, uh, lower and middle income Americans. There's a continued push to uh, uh, reduce or to, to remove the ACA. And you have, uh, you know, continued culture wars. But, uh, you know, what, what we have in the administration and working with partners of our uh, in Congress who are uh, coming through with a number of good ideas is to continue to take the steps that are needed, uh, both on the price side and on the growth side, to keep our economy strong. Uh, what? The, the, I mean, when, when, when Pete Buttigieg speaks, does he actually say anything? Does he actually say anything or does he just pull out a bunch of polysyllabic, um, my my gosh, um, wow. Meanwhile, uh, Senator Barrasso, well, listen to him. And three quarters of Americans believe the economy is heading worse than it is right now. And they lay it at the feet of the policies of this administration, the massive government spending, the unnecessary so-called stimulus package of two trillion dollars when Joe Biden came into office. And Maria, their solution is more of the same. They're trying to convince Joe Manchin, Christian Cinema, to spend more money and raise taxes at the same time. That's the cornerstone of their economic plan, which is why their plan has failed. American people cannot afford more taxes when they can't even afford to put food on the table. And the expenses today, just to maintain where they were a year ago, is $5,000 a year more today than it was last year. We have the energy well, in the ground. We need to use it. Once again, Joe Biden is too slow to respond to the needs of yeah. the American people. One more, Senator Barrasso, uh, on with Maria Bartiromo. We need to use American energy. We have it in the ground. He won't let us get it out. But I think Joe Biden actually wants high gasoline prices so he can force people into electric vehicles. Remember, as a candidate, he said he absolutely guarantees he will eliminate fossil fuels and just this week in Wyoming, the president sided with environmental extremists going after 2,000 oil and gas leases in Wyoming that were granted from 2015 to 2020. He wasn't even president then. This is going to cost more American jobs and it's going to cost people all across the country more in terms of high costs. Look, this is unmistakable evidence right now that the president when he says, oh, I'm doing, quote, everything possible, close quote, to lower the cost of energy is flat out lying to the American people. And there is no other way to say it. It's true. And now he wants to go to New Mexico. Biden does. He wants to get out of the White House and tell Americans we need to switch to battery powered cars. Oh, someone did. This is the other story. This is the other story. Um, a Wall Street Journal reporter rented an electric car. Well, 
I'll tell you how that went when we come back. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, More importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, You can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, you can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it, and I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member FINRA. Pacific. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Glad to be back with you guys. It was a good week off. I had a great birthday. I did, but I missed you guys. I miss my microphone when I'm gone. Now, Biden wants to go to New Mexico and demand that Americans embrace his climate agenda. My buddy Ryan, actually, he's texting me. The Biden policies are intentional and they're working as designed. The energy sector destruction and inflation are intended results. Americans are too stupid and ungrateful. They can't see the brilliant master plan or foundation that's leading to this incredible transition. In other words, you don't know what's good for you. As a matter of fact, I mean, listen, I I, I couldn't say it better than Ryan in, in his text because, listen, uh, what's her name? The the uh, Secretary Raimondo, the Commerce Secretary, listen to her talk about inflation. Uh, I don't really agree with that characterization. Look, the reality is I was just in Europe a couple of weeks ago. Gas there in France is $10 a gallon, and right? And they didn't have uh, an American rescue plan like we did. I shudder to think, Jake, what we'd be living through right now if we didn't have the American rescue plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, we had Trump. And we didn't have inflation before the American Rescue Plan. By the way, uh, European gas prices have always been astronomically high. Uh, Her saying it's $10 a gallon in France. First of all, they use liters there, not gallons. But um, even with the conversion rate and the like, y'all, France has always historically had massively high gas prices. It's why it's one of the reasons France incentivizes public transportation. They try to dissuade car ownership there, much like the American left wants to do. To say that France has $10 a gallon is a BS lie because France always has higher gas prices than us. Even when I was a kid, when I would go to France, France had exorbitant gas prices. Remember, that was the money for vaccinations, which actually allowed us to get everybody back to work. That was the money for emergency rental relief. Um, I, I was the governor of Rhode Island before this job. When I took over as governor, we were deep into the quote unquote recovery from the stimulus last time, which was anemic. And when I took over, unemployment in my state was seven or eight percent. So, uh, wow. Yeah. Be- because of the pandemic. Wow. Uh, what terrible spin. What terrible spin. She's disagreeing with Larry Summers saying that uh, the American recovery plan caused inflation. They they are flat out denying reality at this point inside the White House. Well, the stock market opened this morning with a bit of a rally. The rally has now petered out as it appears interest rates are continuing to go up uh, as the Fed tries to 
land softly without a recession, it's not going to work. But um, in any event, we got to move on. Uh, I got to I got to this, this unbelievable story. There there are several unbelievable stories out there, but we got to pivot real quick to this story. It was all the rage over the weekend. It came on the weekend, and I'm happy because otherwise I probably would have had to throw off whoever was guest host for Friday, I guess, Cam, because, oh, my gosh, the story. It's just it, it's perfect. So Biden is going to go to New Mexico and essentially tell everybody you got to get into electric cars. The reason he's going to New Mexico is because New Mexico's fire season has started early. It's, oh, it's global warming. It's global warming. So uh, this is Rachel Wolf in The Wall Street Journal. Uh, the story actually, I guess it did hit uh, late on uh, my birthday on Friday. Uh, it appeared in the print edition on June 4th. So there we go. She decided to rent an electric car. I told my friend, uh, I thought it would be fun. That's what I told my friend Mac when I asked to dr- her to drive with me from New Orleans to Chicago and back in an electric car. I'd made long road trips before, surviving pop tires, blown headlights, and shredded wheel well liners in my 2008 Volkswagen Jetta. I figured driving the brand new Kia EV6 I'd rented would be a piece of cake. If, that is, the public charging infrastructure cooperated. We wouldn't be the first to test it. Sales of pure and hybrid plug-ins doubled in the U.S. last year to 656,866, over 4% of the total market, according to database EV volumes. More than half of car buyers say they want their next car to be an electric vehicle. Oh, and we aim to make the 2,000-mile trip in just under four days so Mac could make her Thursday afternoon shift as a waitress. They say restaurant server in the Wall Street Journal, but that's a waitress or a waiter if you're a guy. Given our battery range of up to 310 miles, I plotted a meticulous route. Splitting our days into four chunks of roughly seven and a half hours each, we need to charge once or twice each day and plug in near our hotel overnight. The PlugShare app, a user-generated map of public chargers, showed thousands of charging options between New Orleans and Chicago, but most were level two, requiring eight hours for a charge. While we'd be fine overnight, we required fast chargers during the day. ChargePoint Holdings Incorporated, which manufactures and maintains many fast charging stations, promises an 80% charge in 20 to 30 minutes, longer than stopping for gas, but good for a bite or bathroom break. The government is spending $5 billion to build a nationwide network of fast chargers, which means thousands more should soon dot major highways. For now, though, fast chargers tend to be located in parking lots of suburban shopping malls or tethered to gas stations or car dealerships. As you can imagine, it went poorly. They got to the Kia dealership in Meridian, Mississippi. Now, you should know. When I drive over to Louisiana to see my parents, we have to go through Meridian, Mississippi. You get on I-20 from Atlanta, and you cruise on over to Jackson, Mississippi, and you stop at Meridian. Hometown of Jimmy Rogers, the country music legend. When I asked a mechanic working on an SUV at the Kia dealership for help, he said he didn't know anything about the electric charging station at the shop. At the front desk, the receptionist told us to go to the technician who we just asked who knew nothing about it. (laughs) Not many people use the charger, the mechanic told us. We soon see why. Once up and running, the dashboard tells us that a full charge will take three hours. It turns out not all fast chargers live up to the name. The biggest variable, according to the state of charge, is how many kilowatts a unit churns out an hour. To be considered fast, it's got to be 24 kilowatts. The fastest chargers pump out 350. The one in Meridian barely cranked to 20. Even among fast chargers, there's a difference. Worse, it's a 30-minute walk from the Kia dealership to downtown restaurants. Now, here's the thing. I've been to Meridian, Mississippi, as I've told you. 
If you want to walk to downtown Meridian, okay, but most of the restaurants are right there along I-20 anyway. I mean, all the fast food restaurants are like, if you want something simply unique, to say she had to walk 30 minutes to downtown Meridian from the Kia dealership is kind of, well, paints a different picture than where you should probably understand the situation is. Um, I'm looking at Kia of Meridian. Yep, Kia of Meridian is literally right off I-20. You want to get to the downtown heart of Meridian? That's fine if you want to get there, but if you actually just want to stick around the Kia, uh, let's see, there's JJ's uh, just down the street. Uh, look, there's there's donuts and kolaches of Meridian. There's the Great American Grill is right across the street along with the Logan's Roadhouse and an Applebee's. Nobody wants to go to Applebee's because of that stupid song. There's an IHOP, there's a Waffle House, but nope, she wanted to walk the 30 minutes. So, some points on incredulity there, but, but, they decided to take this winding route and go up through Nashville. I don't understand why, when when the straight path would be to go up through St. Louis to get to Chicago, but they wanted to go. And here is the bottom line. They had a horrible trip. They they nearly had their car die several times, and she ends the piece this way. We pull back into New Orleans 30 minutes before Max restaurant shift starts. Exhausted and grumpy. The following week, I fill up my Jetta at a local Shell station. Gas is $4.08 a gallon. I inhale deeply. Fumes never smelled so sweet. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. They couldn't do it. They barely made it. On their way back, at zero miles, we fly screeching into a gas station parking lot. A trash can goes flying and lands with a clatter to greet us. Dinner is beef jerky. Our plans to dine at a beauty shop turned restaurant in Memphis long gone. We start arguing. They had to stop at a McDonald's that had a fast charger. And the charger was broken. It's unbelievable. And this is the life that Joe Biden wants for us. That's what Joe Biden wants. Now, here's the thing. Tesla, if you have a Tesla, Tesla has high-speed chargers. Tesla has an entire network. You have to have an adapter. The Tesla connector is proprietary. So you have to have the adapter. If you don't have the adapter for the Tesla, you can't get it. And they cost a couple hundred bucks, typically. If you want the highest of the high-speed chargers, it's $280. In um, most electric vehicles, can't use the Tesla high-speed charging station anyway. They can't charge as fast as a Tesla. And remember, up until a couple of months ago, the left loved Elon Musk and Tesla. But now he says he's voting Republican, and they're like, well, screw Tesla. They don't like him because he's buying Twitter. They don't like the Tesla network. Tesla literally has a supercharging network. You can drive from Key West, Florida to Seattle, Washington on the Tesla system and get there reasonably. But only Tesla can do it because Tesla put in the infrastructure. And every other vehicle manufacturer making electric vehicles has decided Uncle Sam and Uncle Sam's man boob should subsidize them. They want to suckle off of Uncle Sam's teat so that they can get the government to build the high-speed chargers for them that Tesla itself had built, although with government subsidy. And this is Joe Biden's future. Is it any wonder people hate Joe Biden right now? This is the future he wants for you, an inability to make a standard road trip without going bankrupt. 
NBC News has more here. Inside a Biden White House, adrift. Faced with a worsening political predicament, Joe Biden is pressing aides for a more compelling message and a sharper strategy while bristling at how they've tried to stifle the plain speaking persona that has long been one of his most potent assets. Biden is rattled by his sinking approval ratings and is looking to regain voter confidence that he can provide the sure handed leadership he promised during the campaign. Crises have piled up in ways that have at times made the Biden White House look flat footed, record inflation, high gas prices, a rise in COVID case numbers, the Texas shooting. Democratic leaders are at a loss as to how he can revive his prospects by November. I don't know what's required here, says Representative Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, whose endorsement rescued Biden in 2020. But I do know the poll numbers have been stuck where they are for too long, that he doesn't have any advice is a pretty damning indictment. They're looking at tossing Ron Klain, which they'll do after the midterms. They've got to boot the chief of staff. Even Ron Klain is already planning his departure. They're thinking of bringing in Anita Dunn. She is a Biden friend. No woman has ever been chief of staff, so they love that. But also Steve Reschetti, the Biden aide who's now the counselor to the president. Oh, my gosh, Susan Rice, the domestic policy advisor. That'd be a, a disaster. And Terry McAuliffe. Terry McAuliffe, the former governor of Virginia who lost to Glenn Youngkin, they might make him chief of staff. Names are already circulating. People in the White House are freaked out. They don't know what to do. The first thing they need to do, honestly, it, it, listen, I, I, I don't mean this flippantly. I don't mean this sarcastically. I, I mean this genuinely. I'm deadly serious. I'm honest here. The very first thing that Joe Biden must do to fix the problem is to recognize he caused the problems. He's got to recognize he caused the problems. Listen, when you screw up your life, you often want to find other people to blame. It's why so many conspiracy theories are out there among people who have hard lives because they screwed up their life. They're the ones who screwed up and they can't accept responsibility. They can't internalize the blame. So they got to blame the man. It reminds me, I've told you all the story about the guy who, who was my first indigent criminal defendant said a man put crack cocaine under his under his car seat. That was his defense. I thought he was nuts. Turned out he was a racist. He, he's the man, the white man. He believed the white man had planted the cocaine. That was his defense. He, he did it. He was guilty. He wound up pleading guilty. But people want to blame everyone else. You want to blame uh, Dominion voter systems for the election. You want to blame China for everything. China's to blame for the virus for sure, but not for everything. You want to blame some cabal in Washington. You want to blame the one world government. I can't tell you that the number of blue hairs who are upset. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to use that phrase anymore. We get hate mail. The number of seasoned citizens who blame like one world order, Davos, the World Economic Forum, the Bilderbergers, the Illuminati, because their life sucks. They made poor choices and they can't acknowledge it. So they got to blame someone else for the state of the economy, for themselves, or some sinister machinations behind the scenes when really you made bad decisions. You screwed up your life. Biden's no different. If you can't acknowledge you're the one who screwed it all up, you're not going to be able to fix it. And the Biden administration has been unable to do that, and so they can't fix it. You want to fix it? Stop the spending and start pumping out oil out of every American state that has it. Get as much oil flowing out of this country as possible. That will bring down prices because of the lower energy prices, and the bulk of our inflation comes from high energy prices. It's really, really easy. But they've made it far too complex, and they can't acknowledge they are responsible And they never will. Now, some of you, well, I got to tell you, I was responsible last night for screwing up my house. I I stinked it up. I fried 
onion. Man, I made great onion rings. I'm going to send out my onion ring recipe. It was a fantastic, fantastic fry, but man, the whole house smelled like fry oils until I pulled out the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. We all knew where this was headed. It's true. I did because we don't have an exhaust fit in the kitchen. So I had to pull out the Eden Pure Thunderstorm, and I was able to clean the air with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. And you can get three of them, one for upstairs, one for downstairs, one for your car, your RV, your basement, wherever, and it will wipe out odors. It also gets rid of the mold and the dust and the pollen that floats through your house. It's a great air purifier, and it's filterless. All you do is wipe it out on occasion. What you do is go to EdenPureDeals.com, and you put Eric three in as the discount code right there on the front of the site edenpuredeals.com it'll ask you what's your discount code you put in eric three or you can just click on my name and you'll see the eden pure three pack and you go through to check out there's a discount code box you put in e-r-i-c-k and the number three no space you'll get three eden pure thunderstorms you'll get them for less than two hundred dollars you will save two hundred dollars and you get free shipping All you do is go to EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code E-R-I-C-K-3. You get three of these things for less than $200, and they really work. They cleaned out the air last night. My wife was headed to the essential oils. I beat her to the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. And instead of masking the odor, it eliminated the odor. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC3. Go there now. Hello there, it is Eric Erickson. This hour of the program is brought to you by my friends, the Frost family at First Liberty Building and Loan. They are in Noonan, Georgia, but do not let that dissuade you. Whether you're with my friend in Washington State who I met in Hilton Head or down in Miami Beach or Portland, Maine, it doesn't matter. They can help you anywhere in the United States, even over in Honolulu, Hawaii, as my father-in-law would say. They can help you there too. Why? Because they help American businesses in America become big businesses, and they want to help you. If your business needs access to big loans, $750,000 or more, reach out to them. FirstLibertyGA.com. Go to their website. Tell them I sent you. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if they can get you to yes where banks are saying no. FirstLibertyGA.com. All right. In the next hour, we have to get a little uncomfortable. We do. Gosh, all the other stuff I was going to talk about this hour didn't. By the way, my buddy Todd is listening right now. And Todd noted uh, in the story about the battery-powered car that it got to the McDonald's and the charger was broken. Clearly, the same people who operate the ice cream machine are in charge of the charger. They're both broken. Good eye or good ear for Todd. Yes. Now, I want you to know, I'm going to live forever. Science says I am going to live forever. Till next week when I'm sure someone else comes out with a competing study and retracts it. Coffee extends your life, reduces the risk of dementia, reduces the risk of stroke and heart failure, protects against type 2 diabetes, prostate cancer, liver disease, boosts your mind and mood, especially during wintertime. Coffee, even with sugar and milk. I'm from South Louisiana, folks. Café au lait all the way. Les le bon au lait. Yep. Coffee, I'm going to live forever because I drink so much coffee every day. I can hold a jug of cream in my hands and turn it to butter just standing there still because I shake so much. (laughs) I love my coffee. My gosh, I have a fancy coffee machine at home and I miss it when I go on vacation. I have to start carrying it with me and loving it so it knows that I miss it. When we come back, you will be made to care. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 